Hi there, and thanks for buying one of our map kit projects. This map kit is basically a foundation project for creating your own animations and infographics. So if you have a reasonable understanding of After Effects, then the only limit is your imagination and your creativity. However, I wanted to make a short instructional video to cover the basics and explain some of the features and functions of the item so you can get a better idea of what's possible with your new map kit. This is a generic help video that may not contain examples from your specific map kit, but all the kits are set up the same way, so the instructions are still valid. Hopefully this video will help you get started and you'll be making beautiful map kit animations in no time. Don't hesitate to get in touch if you have any problems though. I'm happy to help and customization services can be provided for a reasonable fee. Okay, so the main composition of the map kit contains the animation of all the countries, states, or provinces of the map coming together from behind the camera. If you want to create a new scene, then just duplicate the main comp in the project panel. You can do this by selecting the comp and then pressing Ctrl and D or go to the edit menu and select copy and then the edit menu again and select duplicate. You'll then have a copy of the main comp, so double click to go into it. You can also rename it by right clicking on it and going to rename. When you're in your newly created composition, you'll want to get rid of all the existing animation so that you can start from scratch. To do so, drag your time indicator to the end of the comp when all of the countries or states are already in position. Then click on one of the layers in the timeline. Press Ctrl and A to select all layers, and then press U to reveal all keyframe properties. You can then click on a stopwatch to turn off any animations. When all the layers are selected, clicking on one type of property will turn off the animation for all the same properties. So for example, if you want to turn off the position stopwatch on one layer, then it will turn off the position keyframe for all layers. But it won't turn off the scale keyframe for any of the layers. So you'll need to scroll through the layers and make sure everything is turned off. Now you have a composition all primed and ready to go. Now you can keyframe the camera as required. Feel free to use the camera controller or the camera itself. Just add a keyframe to all the transform properties at the point you want the animation to start. Move forward in the timeline to where you want the animation to stop. And then play with the position and rotation properties to get the look you want. If you're keyframing the camera itself, then you can press C when your cursor is in the work area to cycle through the different camera tools. Have a play and see which one works best for you. You can add an Ease In and Ease Out effect by selecting all of the keyframes and pressing F9. This will make the animation smoother. If you want to animate the individual countries, states, or provinces, just keyframe the position like above and then you can play with the Z position. This will make the region lift up and sit above the rest of the map. Great for highlighting specific regions. As standard, the map draws the content from the Change Main Image Here comp. So if you add a video or an image in there, it'll be used as a texture for the entire map. If you'd rather use specific colors for the map, then you can do so by activating the effects already set up on the layer. Just go to the FX checkbox and make sure it's turned on. You can click in the top one and scroll down to turn them all on or off. Once you've done this, you'll see that the content in the Change Main Image Here comp is no longer visible, and the map is all one solid color. This is achieved using a fill effect. You can now go through and change each layer to the color of your choice. If you want to animate the color of the layer over time, just keyframe the color picker on the fill effect, move forward to the desired point, and alter the color. If you want to use map markers, then just select one of the map markers in the project panel and drag it into your work area. I want to animate the marker by scaling it up, so I need to move the anchor point of the comp. 
Just grab the pan behind tool and move the anchor point to the bottom of the arrow. Now, I'll turn on the 3D layer and position as required. You can turn on shadows by going to the material options and turning Accept Shadows to On. Keep in mind that material options are only available on 3D layers. Now I'm going to animate the scale of the layer by setting a scale keyframe at the beginning of the layer. You can access the scale property by twirling down the layer and going to the transform properties. Or you can just press S on your keyboard. Set a keyframe on the scale. Set it to zero. Move forward one second and then set it to 100. Now I have a map marker that will animate on and I can change the text by double-clicking on the map marker and changing the text or the colors in there. If I want to change the map marker, then I can click through to the Master Marker Comp and use the Control layer to alter the colors. I can even hide the whole marker by clicking on all of the eyeball switches for the layer and then add in my own map marker. All the changes made in here will be reflected when I go back into my main composition. If you get too close to a layer, then it'll start to become pixelated. All you need to do to fix this is to turn on the continuous rasterization switch, which will make it a vector layer. Then you'll have smooth edges no matter how close you get with the camera. Unfortunately, shadows won't work on vector layers with these settings, and it'll increase render time slightly. But at least you can get nice and close without any drop in quality. When you're ready to render your finished composition, just go to the Composition menu and then Add to Render Queue. Here you can click on the Output Module to change the video format and also reduce the resolution if you only need a 1080p or 720p animation. 4K resolution can take a while to render. The more 3D layers there are in the map kit, the harder it will be to render and the longer it will take. The most difficult to render is the included animation, as there are several 3D layers very close to the camera with lots of shadows and depth of field. If you're going for an animation like any of the other ones included in the preview video, then it's unlikely you should have any problems unless you're on a low-spec machine. If you're getting render errors, or things are taking a long time, then you can turn off the shadows on your light. Turn off depth of field on your camera. Turn off the bevel alpha effect on the layers. And make sure you're set to eight bits per channel and that continuous vectorization is turned off. One thing to note, the early stages of the included animation with all the states combining take the longest to render. So if it's saying it'll take two hours or something to render, then that will speed up as the render continues and it'll probably take less than an hour in all. Just something to keep in mind. Anyway, I think that covers the basics and should give you a reasonable foundation to get started making your own map kit animations. If you need a better understanding of the basics of After Effects, then there are some good tips and tutorials on the Adobe website. If you're still having any trouble, then feel free to drop me a line through the contact box on my profile page. I'm traveling the world for a year or two, so I might not be able to get back to you right away, but I'll be in touch as soon as I can. If you have any custom animations required, then send me all the details and I'll be happy to get you over a quote for the work. Thanks again for buying one of my map kits and thanks for watching.